crazy news courtesy of Vogue Business. I'm surprised by this. I'm not going to lie. Maybe because I hoped secretly that he would build a Cold War into the UK version of fucking Armani or something. But unfortunately, courtesy of Vogue News Business, this is the news that I was surprised to hear. I first heard on Instagram. It says, tomorrow comes with Samuel Ross. Um, an exclusive interview in Vogue Business, a Cold War founder reveals that the 100% sale of his brand to Tomorrow Limited. So uh, Samuel Ross has basically stepped away from a Cold War. He sold it completely in full to uh, Tomorrow Limited and he's put these two guys, I think, in charge. I forgot their names in the background, but they're the ones that are going to be leading the brand going forward. And I think he might focus on his own things. I'm actually surprised, but I'm not going to lie. I thought he was actually going to build that brand up to be, again, like I said, the next Armani. He was going to take it to heady heights and just have it be his kind of baby. But I guess he's maybe, I wouldn't say probably got bored of fashion. Maybe he's just got other, you know, businesses that he's kind of trying to explore. He's obviously trying to get into the contemporary art field. Um, he's obviously got a lot of stuff that he's doing in terms of, um, in you know, um, architecture. Um, he's got a lot of stuff he's doing with installations, sound design, collaborations under his own kind of SRA belt, right, that he's kind of doing at the moment. Um so let's read the article and see what the reason behind it is. Samuel Ross was 20 years old when he began working at Virgil's... Right, he was that young. Fucking hell. When he began working at Virgil's first ever intern. His duties included an um, then unlaunched brand concept called Off-White. Today, 12 years on, Ross reveals the 100% sale of a Cold War, the brand he founded in 2015, to previously minority partner Tomorrow Limited. Um, look, look, look at that. It's a, such a brilliant picture as well, right? Um, Whitney Harlow and Virgil Abbott present British Emerging Talent Menswear Award to Sammy Ross at the Fashion Award 2018. That's such a special picture, isn't it? Virgil handing um, his once intern an award for emerging fashion designer. That is what you actually want to see in it when you're bringing somebody up. Like, again, that's what we miss actually in fashion nowadays. We miss, we don't really have people now in fashion who are giving us the behind the scenes stuff anymore. I think if you noticed it online, there's no more, there's no more like, cool behind the scenes studio stuff and he's been working on a collaboration here's me drawing type of things anymore that's completely gone Virgil's the only person that provided that snapshot of like what it is to be a modern day creative director we don't get it now and now we just get the stuff you know in your face when it's finally done but there's no more behind the scenes you know um in the in the process of working things anymore which is really a sad shame really so RIP to him but that's a beautiful picture it continues while Ross and Stefano Maria, uh, while Ross and Stefano Martinentio, co-founder and CEO of Tomorrow Limited, did not disclose the precise terms of the private deal, um, Martinentio shares that the GMV total revenue before deductions of a cold war amounted to sixteen million. God damn, yo, cold war makes paper. That's a funny thing. I don't actually. I'm not gonna lie. Maybe I don't go to the right places, but I don't actually see a lot of people wearing a cold war in real life. I'm not gonna lie. I know there's a big community of kids that love a Cold War online. There's a massive fucking Facebook group of people buying and selling um, a Cold War. I see the kids in the comments, you know, they love fucking Samuel Ross. But I really don't see a lot of people in real life wearing it. Not going to lie. Really don't see a lot of people wearing it. So it does go to show that they quietly do great business online without crazy fanfare and without influencers without all these fancy street style pictures they just do they quietly sell and i think that's what i would prefer if i was in fashion and i had my brand i'd much prefer to be quietly selling than be all out you know like hell star like you're everywhere on all these pages and shit but your business maybe isn't all the way correct but again who knows it continues it's been amicable and fair the terms of the sale reflect the strong future for a cold war what began as a bedroom startup nine years ago is now a global business with multiple concepts that's a that's a brilliant fucking flex in it a bedroom startup something that he was screen printing at home spray painting air force ones dip dyeing them and shit removing laces all that shit he was doing i still remember that fucking crazy fashion show that he did where the person kind of broke through the cube or something it was like a cube or something right he was doing all these really amazing uh, theatrics on his shows and i remember some of the guys on the show studio panels were like hating and it's super hard again you know standard fashion shit you know when you're black and you're from a certain type of background and you don't go come through a traditional fucking fashion school there's always a little bit you know there's always a simmering of fucking dog whistling going on there and i remember they were hating on that a lot oh it's too theatrical it's taken away from the clothes now look now fucking look after serving time as a label's licensed distributor partner um, and hitting 50 
two doors by the end of 2017, Tremor Limited made its first minority investment in the Cold War in 2018. That was the very beginning of the new business model for us, says Martin Entio. Since then, Tomorrow has emerged as a dynamic incubator, emerging brands um, across fashion, uh, executing key operational functions from manufacturing while um, off, uh, affording its creative partners the freedom to develop their brand entities. I'm not going to lie, for the longest time, I always assumed a Cold War minority stake was with New Guards Group. I thought they were the people, but I guess New Guards Group, the company that was um, invested in Off White um, uh, with Virgil, I guess they were. I guess I confused that with Heron Preston. I think Virgil got Heron Preston a deal with New Guards Group, which obviously let Heron Preston kind of develop that brand into what it is now. But I, I found, for some reason, I was confused tomorrow with New Guards Group, but I guess they're completely different. Other tomorrow investments since a Cold War include Cop um, Coperni, Martin Rose, Charles Jeffrey, Loverboy. Yo, it's been pretty crazy crazy to see Charles Jeffrey Loverboy just be completely um you know embraced by the black community black people love Charles Jeffrey Loverboy specifically the hat right the little bunny ear hat thing they fucking love that hat I don't know why it's become so popular but black people especially in America they fucking love Charles Jeffrey Loverboy so that's been great to see um um, Coyville and artist Daniel Arsham's apparel project Objects for Life and um, it's also a, a early partner in Ambush oh fucking Ambush I fucking hate Ambush before the group was acquired by New Guards before the label was acquired by New Guards group in 2020 um, it invested in the progressive label oh really it's also invested in the, uh, the, the retailer Machine A okay cool so they've definitely got ties. I guess it's definitely the UK company too, right? There's obviously um, Samuel Ross there with, I guess, the person from Tomorrow, right? The CEO um, and founder of Tomorrow, whose name is Stefano Morienti. So big up them. It continues. Um, Morienti says that while the earliest investment in the Cold War was from minority stake, we were talking about a full acquisition today. And our most recent deals have been minority investments. The reason behind this is the resources needed to launch and protect a brand are way more in the past. Um, and, all, and through doubling down with the winners, we see opportunities. Ross and Moriento have been co professional confidence since 2018. And the CEO of credits the designer as being instrumental in both Arsham and Rose's onboarding on tomorrow. Is it really incredible? So, um, Sammy Rose played a role in getting Daniel Arsham signed onto there, and obviously, them signing Martin Rose. Great, big up Sammy Ross, um, one of the biggest agents out there, right? Sammy Ross was instrumental in my decision to invest in Martin, and I suspect also in Martin's decision to accept the investment. The brand will now be led by managing director Giovanni De Marchi and creatively led by art director William Solo William Slocomb William Slocomb Slocombi or Slocomb and brand director Liam Hasimi. Mariento says that the team has been decided not to appoint a new creative director and instead they will take collective approach. Oh, I love this. So Sammy Ross isn't the creative director anymore. Those two guys, William and Liam, will lead, um, I guess, it with everybody else's input as well. I like that. I kind of like that. I'm not going to lie. Because um, the codes are already there. The codes of a Cold War are already there. They're kind of laid, you know, it's kind of a bit obvious to see what they do. And if you've got any kind of design, creative kind of, you know, talents about you, just tweaking that along the way is pretty easy thing to do, I'd imagine. And obviously improving and evolving um, as you progress. It says here, um, a Cold War is a small brand, but it's got a, it's a global brand. It's expanding, as well as in the UK. And of course, its audience is mostly in North America. Ah, oh, that might explain why I don't see a lot in the UK. They said the audience is mostly North America, China and Korea. I had no idea it was so big in China and Korea. That's pretty cool. There are currently two brick and mortar stores in China and several pop shops and shops around the world. Morita says that the further expansion is planned. Yeah, true. So we're definitely going to see a London retail store probably very soon in, in, in a major Western city, you'd imagine, in the next couple of years. So I'm, I'm be excited to see how that kind of pans out. I love some of the advertisement there. Very Stone, very uh, Stone Island-esque. Um, that's great to see. As for Ross, he is stepping away satisfied great wow man big up Sammy ross man again as much as i would love him to stay and build a cold war into the next armani he just got too much on his plate probably got way a lot what so many opportunities and i think sometimes it is good to step away at the top right while you're at your pump while you still got so many years to kind of you know he's still not in his peak at all it's probably best to step away now than to wait when it, things get really terrible it says as for ross he's stepping away satisfied 
A Cold War has 10 full-time employees and most have been there for six or seven years. There's still the very intimate way of working because people actually can scale and grow a career and have control over the brand producers, which goes back to my original idea of being a young startup and finding a new way to grow in fashion. Big up him. His next idea will be revealed in due course. However, he adds, my goal is now to design products and other entities under my own namesake, which is my... Exactly. I, I always got the appeal. I always got the feeling something i don't know what changed him but i think something happened i think he fell out of love of fashion with a capital f that's my theory i think somewhere along the line he just kind of got put off with fashion in general and started to go down the more um being a contemporary artist being a quote-unquote designer with a capital d which i i think is a far more interesting path anyway i think being a fashion designer is pretty limiting there's not really much you can do outside of just redesigning the fucking wheel but i think when you become like an all-encompassing wide-ranging designer artiste um you know with a capital d and an a i think the the options are unlimited from scoring movies to designing movie sets to installations to building buildings interiors fabrication like music it can just you know there's so many options but when you just limit yourself to fashion there's not much else you can do apart from just making shit hot products and kind of just churning them out and i think that there's people obviously that can do that now but i think if you actually have you know a lot of talents, a lot of skills, a lot of interest. I think actually stepping away from fashion and being that kind of guy is probably the best way to kind of go go about doing things. I think that's why I've always kind of looked at people like Hiroshi Fujiwara as a really good example of somebody I always kind of wanted to emulate. Someone like even like a Tom Sachs being a good example, somebody I wanted to kind of emulate because they've had this kind of career where it's not really been, you know, they dabbled in fashion. It's mostly been a designy type of thing, right? So if they want to build furniture, they build it. If they want to design, you know, if they want to collaborate on electronics, they do it. If they want to do collaborations with you know spaces and art projects and exhibitions they do it it's all kind of there's a broad range of things that they can do and it's all about telling their story it's all about sharing a vision of the world it's all about inspiring it's all about you know all these type of things that you can do that just kind of it falls outside the remit of a very limited scope when it comes to fashion fashion can be quite you know there's a lot of things you can do but also it's quite limiting because you know at the end of the day it's still fashion um that's basically what I was saying there. So big up um, a Cold War, big up Sammy Ross. Absolutely love to see it. Um, great to see a young black man be able to kind of take, again, a bedroom startup to this level where he's probably cashed out in the millions, right? That, that goes without saying. Um, and now he's kind of, you know, probably going to take his own namesake brand that he's obviously been pushing and using as a kind of platform because it feels like in recent times, there's been a lot more of the watch collaborations. I think I've got what else he kind of done by his own label. I forgot, but it's, it, I've seen a lot more of a shift of him kind of moving more to a cause representing himself as opposed to a Cold War. So he's kind of separate himself from a Cold War, do his own thing and kind of rewrite that and go from there. So it's been cool to see. So big up a Sammy Ross. Um, fucking love it. And hopefully I'll uh, great to see how a Cold War develops and goes from there. And I can't wait to see when they do launch their London store because I feel I've got a feeling that's going to happen sometime very, very, very soon.